Expressor Software, the industry leader in simplified data integration, provides an intuitive data integration platform that allows ETL developers and business analysts alike the ability to access, conform, and deliver data in a variety of methods and formats. In this demonstration, we will build an Expressor data flow with the Expressor Design Studio. The data flow will consist of operators that will access, conform, and correct employee data records. These records will then be delivered to Microsoft SQL Server database using the robust capabilities of the Expressor semantic framework. The Expressor Design Studio is accessible via a Windows desktop and features a simple interface where you will build, deploy, and manage your integration applications. Let's start building the data flow by dragging over the read file operator. Expressor packages a variety of operators that perform various operations on data. They provide the ability to read, write, transform, and more without the trouble of coding to an API. We will configure a file connection to access the limited text file that contains employee data. We can simply select a predefined connection or create a new one. Next, we will create the delimited schema that will define the physical external structure to the read file operator. We select our file connection, browse to our data file, and review the sampled records. If needed, we can adjust the appropriate parameters. The provided header record allows us to easily define the field names for the schema. This can also be used as the internal attribute names referenced by the semantic framework. We finish the configuration by naming our schema. I will configure the operator to skip the first row of data, in order to skip the header record. Next, we will edit the defined schema's composite type to define conformed attribute names, constraints, and corrective actions. I will rename employee ID to AMP ID and provide a minimum and maximum constraint string length value. I will set a corrective action to use a default value of six zeros. If the minimum constraint is not met, it will replace the values accordingly. I will set another corrective action to truncate left if the maximum length is exceeded. I will adjust the mapping to pad the suffix of the ID string with a zero character up to the defined maximum of six. This will ensure that all employee IDs end in a zero character. I will then conform the attribute name for employee first name and employee last to use F name and L name, respectively. I will name employee years to years employed and change the data type from a string to an integer. Expressor automatically handles all the data type conversions so the attributes are used appropriately in the transfer rules of the data flow. I will then change employee salary to salary and convert its data type to a double with a minimum value constraint of zero and a maximum value constraint of 150,000. We will set the corrective actions to escalate if the constraints are not satisfied. Finally, I will rename employee underscore sex to gender and provide an allowed list of values, again escalating the corrective action. We will now add a transform operator to the data flow. This will enrich, calculate, and conform existing or new data using the transform operator's rules editor. With a lookup expression rule, I can select the defined lookup table available from the referenced reusable library. The lookup table contains the department information I need to enrich my data. I simply map the department ID to the input rule parameter ID key. I create a new attribute named department of type string to be added to my output list and drag it to the output parameter of the rule. This rule will now provide the department name from the lookup table. Furthermore, I can block the transfer of the department ID attribute as I do not need that in my final data output. Next, I will add a rule that concatenates the employee's last name and first name to be mapped to a new full name attribute in the output list. 
Notice how the Rule Editor's IntelliSense Auto Completion feature helps guide me to complete this rule easily. I will add a final rule to conform the employee's phone number to contain hyphens instead of plus symbols. I will select the Replace function from the comprehensive library of string, numeric, date, and logical functions available. I insert the appropriate function parameters and map the phone output attribute to the output rule parameter. The resulting auto-propagated and derived output attributes can now be shared as a new composite type. This will be applied and mapped to my target SQL database configured within the Write Table Operator. Next, we will configure a Write Table Operator and its corresponding table schema. I will select the database connection configured to access my Microsoft SQL database. This has already been defined in my shared library. Let's now create the table schema. I'll select the DB connection and navigate the structure of my database to select the employee data table. I will use the provided default name for my schema. I will now edit the schema and apply the conformed shared composite type we created from the transform operator. I will now map the new type to the target structure. You will notice that like field and attribute names are already mapped. I simply drag the field name to the corresponding attribute name in my composite type to complete the new mapping. We now must configure the right operator's type property to use the shared type. Notice that the operator's color indication has changed to green, indicating that all properties have been satisfied. Before we run our data flow, I'd like to configure error handling on my read operator to support the escalate corrective actions we've defined in the composite type. This will enable me to collect all records that did not pass my data validation rules. For this example, we will write them to a file. I have a pre-configured write table operator template and schema already defined in my shared library. The use of operator templates and shared artifacts dramatically reduces development time and allows even business analysts a simplified way to build a data flow. We will now run the data flow and note the results. We were able to capture the rejected records in a file these records are the ones that did not meet the defined constraints that we set earlier. Note that the employee data table contains the conformed and derived data that we defined in the transform operator. Before we conclude this demonstration, I would like to highlight a particular benefit of the Expressor Semantic Framework and its reusable artifacts when it comes to onboarding similar data that may not be alike in structure or source. This time, I will provision data from an Oracle data source that contains a different data structure. Following the steps I have already demonstrated, I created a read table operator template to use a shared composite type that was created from the original employee file schema. I then map the Oracle structure to the same composite type, leveraging the work I have already created in the rest of the data flow. With this capability, I can bring in similar data from any data source and structure without having to modify the rest of the data flow. Thank you for your interest in Expressor Software's semantic data integration platform. Please visit our website at www.expressor-software.com to register for a free no-risk 30-day trial and get started now.